What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, man, Bash in Berlin was a great, great show. Shout out to the people that joined in on the live stream. I really appreciate y'all. Dub wasn't able to join or um, Sir Dance a lot, the homie Steve. Um, Dub's been under the weather, but he's feeling much better. He just wanted to kind of relax, chill with his family. His mom's birthday uh, was yesterday, and his daughter's birthday was yesterday. So he's chilling with fam, relaxing, talking to him early. So shout out to Dub. Y'all keep sending him wish, you know, get well wishes and prayers. Uh, but he's doing much better just relaxing, man. You know, understandable so. And and Steve, I think he's just getting back in from a cruise. He's been chilling with family. So I held down the fort. Thank y'all to everyone that joined in on the live stream. But we got to talk about this great PLE. Once again, WWE, they're killing it with these European shows and these foreign uh, country shows because the crowd brings the energy. And Berlin, y'all brought the energy. Y'all were almost as close you know, there was some point y'all were neck and neck with Lyon, France, and their energy they brought. Like, you guys were amazing. I've seen clips of people at the show. Just energy was on a 10. This was fantastic. Some good matches. And I, I really enjoyed this PLE. We're going to get into some of the highlights of the show. Um, Let's go ahead and get started. Get my thoughts and opinions on where things could go. So we got to start with the uh, Kevin Owens versus Cody Rhodes for the WWE undisputed championship i did take some notes so i may skip over it as much as i possibly you know can i don't want to make this too long but some of the things that you know got my attention and first and foremost going into this match i like the idea of what they did on smackdown where they basically was setting up the uh the i guess the story of kevin owens haven't really been doing much in the title contention scene for quite some time at least on the solo side of things he hasn't really won a solos championship in a very long time he brought up the fact that he hasn't been a top champion since like eight years ago when he won the universal championship so they were setting this idea up that ko has you know been falling short and cody essentially shouldn't be taking this you know, shouldn't be putting him in this match because KO may revert to the old KO. The KO that was quick to power bomb you on the apron and not give a damn just to to win the match. The prize fighter KO. So I like the fact that they were teasing that and Cody essentially being the one to honestly, you know, kind of bring this on himself. And we found out through um uh, commentary, um, uh, Wade Barrett said what um kevin owens had told him was essentially what he whispered to him on in on his uh in his ear on friday was remember that you asked for this and that's the theme that they're going with cody wanted this match but are you sure you want what comes with this match so at the beginning uh early stages of the match um kevin owens had cody scouted he kind of knew where Cody was going to do, what type of moves he was all, Cody kept trying to go for that springboard cutter and it would always get reversed. Cody, you know, was scouted like KO. They know each other very well. So, you know, KO, KO had, I guess you can say he was countering Cody's potential offense. I like the, what they were doing with that. Um, um, uh, I want to say still early stages of the match. KO goes for a um a stunner, and Cody ends up reversing it into a quick crossroads for a, a near count. That was a nice transition, and uh KO ended up kicking out. KO ends up hitting a brain buster to Cody from the top rope for a close two count. That was a, a very nice spot. And then Cody went to the top rope and his knee went out. And remember. Sat a Friday night, um, Kevin Owens mentioned your knee's not at 100%. I know it's not. Are you sure you really want to do this? And that's what happens here. He goes for the top rope, but his knee gives out. And while he's, while the ref is checking on him on the ropes, trying to see what's going wrong with his knee, KO had the perfect opportunity to attack him, but he didn't. He didn't go for the knee. And even way on commentary, Michael Cole's like, he, what is he doing? This is his perfect opportunity. But Michael Cole was like, well, that's his friend. He doesn't want to hurt him. So um, they end up going to the outside. And 
And Cody's like, I'm good, I'm fine. So he starts fighting KO. KO starts fighting back. KO has him in the position to put him, uh, to hit him with the power bomb on the apron. We know KO loves putting people, hitting people with the power bomb onto the apron and usually pretty much essentially packs whoever he does it to, he packs him up. You know, and essentially, if he was to, was to hit it, then the match would damn near be over. He's going to, he looks like he's going to do it, but he doesn't do it. He doesn't hit uh, Cody Rhodes with the um, the apron power bomb, And ultimately, that is what ends up costing him in the end. Um, they end up getting back into the ring, and Cody ends up kicking out of two stunners from KO. KO went to the top rope to hit the senton, but Cody got his knees up and hit KO with the crossroads one more time in the ring. Because earlier in the match, he hit he was going for the trifecta, but he wasn't able to get it because KO ended up countering it. So he finally hits him with the crossroads for the one, two, three. And it was over. Cody and KO embraced. They hugged each other, and KO raised his hand. But you can see in the camera, the camera's looking at KO's face as he's hugging Cody, but he has this, like, blank look. It's, like, dejected. And I do think they're playing this up. I don't think this is done. I do think we're going to probably get into the, uh, I think the next match, most likely, or the next few that's going to be trying to build up, once again, is uh, Cody versus Solo for the uh, WWE uh, Undisputed Championship. But this is not over because KO essentially could have won the match. And I think that's going to be the catalyst for him to actually turn now because he didn't attack him. He let Cody make it. And I think that's going to be the argument he makes. I could have ended you, Cody. I let you make it. You're only champion because I let you make it. It's going to be good. At first, I wasn't really interested in this feud. This matchup, but they've made you care. This was a really good match. Crowd was really electric. Great way to start off the show. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with Kevin Owens and Rant and um Kevin Owens and Cody. I do not think they're done. We're gonna have something else down the line and we're gonna see what happens. Uh next match was Alba uh Fire and Isla Dawn versus Bianca and um Jay Cargill for the women's tag team uh championship. I didn't really take too much notes on this one because the crowd was somewhat into it, but it definitely died down. Like, from the beginning, that opening match to that match, it died down with the energy. But the crowd still was trying to show some interest in, you know, on certain moves. I will say this. I was wrong on this prediction. I thought that Alba Fire and Isla Dawn was going to retain because they've been building them up as a competent tag team that knows what to do like they are a they are a legit tag team they work together they have tandem moves they're they're very in and out quick trying to do stuff behind the referee's back this referee i don't know what he was doing but he was not refereeing <laughs> it looked like he wanted alba fire and aladon to win this but ultimately they end up getting the win uh in jade and bianca i was not expecting this but i guess it makes sense because we are going to get that storyline of jade and bianca losing those titles once again maybe sometime next year i don't know maybe at the end of this year and we're gonna get that heel turn the question is who turns heel but in the meantime, I don't know what they do. They're going to probably start building up that dissension because they're going to have some miscommunication in future matches. It's going to be some issues. They're going to build it up, and it's going to finally lead to one of them turning that's going to cost them the, the tag titles, and then we get a few leading into WrestleMania. So we'll see how that plays out. But this was like the low point of the show, but it wasn't a bad match. It's kind of a middle-of-the-road match, not something I would go back to watch again. But, hey, they, you know, they end up giving the win to Jade and Bianca once again. And now they are your new tag team champion. So we'll see what they do with that. Next, my favorite match of the night, CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre strap match. This was the match I was looking forward to. The brutality was there. We got us some blood. It made sense. And boy, oh boy, this match was fantastic. Before the bell even rings, CM Punk's doing his entrance. Drew attacks, attacks him from behind, starts beating him up, starts hitting him with the strap. 
over and over and over, the match hasn't even started. Hadn't even started, man. Um, once they finally, uh, Drew was able to put the strap on to CM Punk after he beat him up, uh, threw, him, threw him on the announce table, start beating him up with the strap again. Then they started the match and Drew essentially had control. At the beginning of the stages of this match, Drew had control. He was packing up CM Punk. CM Punk was catching some beats. And early in the match, CM Punk was able to hit the GTS on Drew very early. It was like a quick, quick little counter. He was able to put him in a GTS position. He hit him with it. And he had the opportunity to hit one of the turnbuckles. Because for those who don't know in the strap match, if you don't hit all the turnbuckles in a sequential order... Then you don't win the match. That's the only way you can win. So he had the opportunity to hit one of the turnbuckles he was closest to, but he didn't do it. And I was wondering, are they going to tell the story that this hatred for Drew may cost him again? And that's what they were teasing here. His hatred for Drew may cost him. So he doesn't do that, and he decides to whip <laughs> Drew McIntyre like a government mule instead of hitting the turnbuckle. Drew tried to go. Uh, Drew tried to go for the future shock DDT on the announce table, but CM Punk reversed it and flipped him on. Uh, flipped him over onto the table instead. Then at one point they end up brawling on. You know, still on the announce table table side they get back in the ring and you see cm punk got busted open i didn't see exactly where but he ended up getting busted open and once drew saw that he started going in for the kill started hitting him repeatedly with headbutts and then started going in with the fist just uh, attacking cm punk's injured uh head uh where the blood was coming from and i like that it's a strap match there needs to be some brutality there even early in the match you can see the welts forming i'm like this is what this feud needs we need a little bit of color and we finally got it um drew ends up hitting uh cm punk with the claymore and uh as he gets back in the ring um from uh setting up the table outside wait hold on what, what did i say right here because at this point i was trying to take notes but i was a little bit too excited uh so i know drew hit uh cm punk with the claymore claymore kick um I think I, as he gets back in the ring from setting up the table. Oh, okay, okay. So this was the spot where Drew, uh, CM Punk goes because they were teasing back and forth of getting the table. CM Punk would get the table from under the ring. Drew would push it back in. So finally, CM Punk gets the table. He sets it up on the outside. And as he gets back in the ring, he gets hit with the Claymore kick. Uh, Drew, now this was a good spot. Drew lifts up CM Punk uh, on the top rope. And um, he throws him over uh, the top rope onto the table that he ended up setting up. I thought that was a, a pretty cool moment there. The same table that he set up, Drew ends up lifting CM Punk over the top rope, throws him on through the table. Then he gets him back in the ring. And this was another good moment. Drew had CM Punk on his shoulders. So he's walking around and he's hitting each of the turnbuckles but what he doesn't realize is cm punk is hitting each one of the turnbuckles as well so he gets to the next spot he hits the turnbuckle cm drew doesn't see it then he gets to the third uh turnbuckle and drew hits it cm punk hits it and then we're getting to the fourth and that's when drew realized something is wrong and they have a little tug of war i like that that was 200 iq right there that's how you do it um uh, let's see, CM Punk had Drew um, in the sharpshooter, and now Drew's tapping, but that's not how you win the match, so Drew is tapping, he's like, let go of the hold, let go of the hold, <laughs> Drew's tapping, tapping, tap, tap, tapping, CM Punk's not letting go of the hold, and essentially, Drew kind of passes out per se, then CM Punk starts hitting the different turnbuckles, and that's when Drew finally gets back and realizes what's going on and trying to, you know, trying to stop CM Punk from hitting the rest of the turnbuckles. At one point, they're both on the ground, both on the mat. Then all of a sudden, Drew hits a kip up. I'm like, wait a minute. You hit a kip up after you was just in the sharpshooter for about a minute plus. What's going on here? <laughs> Drew hits the kip up, and 
Then he decides to pull out the bracelets from his tights. He puts it on his arm. He goes and gives it a kiss. And he's setting up CM Funk. Uh, CM Funk. <laughs> he's setting up CM Punk for the second Claymore. And CM Punk uh, ends up getting hit with the second Claymore. Then, after that sequence, CM Punk's able to hit Drew with the third GTS. And then he sees the bracelet on Drew's wrist. So now CM Punk's in the process of trying to hit all the turnbuckles. But he sees the bracelet on Drew's wrist. So he ends up taking the bracelet off of him. CM Punk hits the fourth GTS. And he's going through hitting all the turnbuckles. He looks back at Drew. as Every time he keeps stirring, CM Punk hits Drew with the fifth GTS. And uh, that's when he gets the bracelet at that point. After he drew with the fifth GTS, he gets the bracelet, and then he finally hits the final turnbuckle for the win. CM Punk not only got his bracelet back, he ends up packing up Drew McIntyre with five GTSs for the win. This was a much-needed win for CM Punk. Great to see this. Really great match. Crowd was electric. I love this match. 10 out of 10, my favorite match of the show, and I do not think this is over. It's not. It's not over because Drew's not going. He drew. I, I'm very interested to see what Drew says and or does on Monday Night Raw because he's not going to let this go. CM Punk got his revenge. He hit him with five GTSs and got the bracelet back and beat him. He's not going to let this go. So we're going to get a third match. Hopefully it's a hell in a cell at Bad Blood. I, I can't fucking wait. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Really good match. Next, we got Dom and Liv versus Rhea and uh, Damian Priest. This mixed tag team match story in this one was really entertaining. And I was looking forward to seeing how this plays out. Michael Cole was fantastic tonight. He was on one. I don't know if he had a couple of shots or what, but he was talking his trash. Michael Cole was talking trash to Dominic and Liv as Rhea and Damien was walking down to the ring. He was over there like, hey, why don't you go get in the ring? Why y'all still waiting right here? What y'all doing? Get in the ring. <laughs> it was fucking great. Um, early in the match, Dom was catching the beats by Damien Priest. It was so satisfying to see Dominic get beat up. You love to see Dominic get beat up. Rhea starts to give out the beats to Liv Morgan once she ends up tagging into the match. Uh, Rhea starts to attack Dom, and this is, this is I want to make this point. Rhea starts to attack Dom after they're back and forth. Rhea starts to attack Dom, and she puts Dominic in the same leg lock she had when Dominic first turned. Before he turned, when Dominic was getting bullied by the Judgment Day, when they were bullying Dominic and, and Rey Mysterio's dad, and y'all remember that infamous situation where Dominic was on stuck in between Rhea's leg. She had him in a chokehold on the top rope and he's begging for mercy. This is how it all started. It was a beautiful callback. And the same reaction he had then, he had the same reaction here. It was such a good moment. A uh, huge crowd popping. It was just, just one of those callback moments. Everything that started it all, it, it comes back full circle. Uh, Let's see what's next. Both uh lived... Um, both know um, Rhea and Damien, they end up getting Liv and Dominic in the uh, in the uh, in the pose for the the razor edge. And they both hit the razor edge at the same time. That was a nice little uh, moment right there. And then, of course, the Judgment Day do get involved with J.D. Um, what's the name? Um can't even think of his name, Carlito, Finn Balor. They all get involved. The numbers game starts to get the best of them. But ultimately, the Terror Twins are able to fight them off. Uh, Damian Priest starts fighting off the rest of the Judgment Day. Um, at one point, Dominic, it looks like he's about to try to put Damian Priest through the announce table, but ends up getting clotheslined into oblivion onto the announce table, onto the floor. Uh, also, Damian was able to give Finn Balor a super kick of his own. He was kicking everybody in the face. And you see Liv on the ropes watching this happen, like in the ring, but she doesn't realize that Rhea is right behind her. Rhea sees her. 
right behind her. She grabs up Liv, hits Liv with the rip tide, and she pins her with the all-in pin. Of course, she pins her with the all-in pin for the one, the two, the three. And Rhea and Damian Priest ends up winning. And as Liv is uh, essentially unconscious, Rhea decides to lick her face just to let her know that she is the dominant one and she's always on top. So that was a crazy visual. I know a lot of people are going to make memes off of Rhea licking uh, Liv's unconscious face. But hey, that was a great moment and it sets up their future match at Bad Blood because she just pinned the champion. I thought Dominic was going to get pinned. But no, Rhea got pinned. I mean, Rhea pins Liv Morgan as the women's champion. And that looks like we're going to get a rematch at Bad Blood. It may be, we may probably get two Hell in the Cells. And that may be one of the Hell in the Cells. Because their feud really does go back and forth. So I don't know. We'll see. But they're going to have a match at Bad Blood most likely. And the question is, will Rhea retain, will, will Rhea get the gold back? I don't know. We'll see. Overall, great match, really fun, enjoyed this. Once again, this show was, they were knocking it out the park with the matches and stuff, and, and it went by pretty quick. And the last match of the night, Gunther versus Randy. Now, this was really surprising how things played out. Ludwig ends up, well, Samantha ends up announcing Randy, but Ludwig comes out there and announces Gunther instead. Great crowd reaction for Gunther. Uh, beginning of the match, crowd is doing the wave. This crowd, in this main event, this was probably one that they were really, really lit. Crowd's doing the wave, and Randy decides to do the wave with them one good time. It's such a cool moment. Um, Randy was uh, back body and drop. Like, Randy would back body drop. Gunther on the outside, they end up, at first they were trading blows, but then they end up on the outside. Randy kept hitting them with the back body drop onto the announce table over and over and over. Uh, Randy started working on Gunther's bad arm from the back body drops on the outside. And I made note of this, you don't see Gunther in a lot of pain in his matches. Like, he's usually the one that's dominant with the offense. But in this match, this was one of the rare times I've seen him actually be the one getting dominated or really fighting from underneath gunther was the one fighting from underneath here and they really showed the the i guess the the um the storytelling of randy being this veteran that knows what he needs to do to take out gunther um gunther was being dominated majority of the match that's what notes i decided to take and at one point randy just poked gunther right in the eyes after they were trading chops right in front of the referee it's randy orton he's a snake can't trust him um gunther arm was giving him issues throughout the match he wasn't able to hit the the forearm like the uh the clothesline like he normally would he was having issues with the power bomb he was having issues with giving the chops with that particular arm um Randy hit an RKO out of nowhere for a very close two count. Um, Randy drops Gunther onto the steel steps on the outside. And at this point, Randy was definitely listening to the voices in his head because now he's trying to pack up Gunther. And he hits him. He drops him. Back body drops him onto the steel steps. Then he goes, clears out the announce table already, sets up the other steel steps on top. He gets Gunther and he back body drops him on from the top of the steel steps onto the announce table, onto the floor. You don't really see Gunther in those type of spots. You rarely see him in those type of spots. He was vulnerable and it looked like the match was over. It looked like Randy had got it. He was gloating. You know, it, it looked like Randy was going to win here. So um, at one point, they get back into the ring, and Randy's trying to go for, the, you know, the patent on one more RKO, but ends up getting caught into a chokehold. He ends up getting caught into a chokehold. Gunther's trying to choke him out. He ends up slipping out, using the bad arm as leverage, and then he gets it back in, uh, and then he ends up kind of just falling on his back to kind of get uh, Gunther to release. Gunther releases for a little bit, but then Gunther locks it back in again, even, you know, he's holding on desperately to make sure that Randy doesn't get out of his. Randy's trying to roll through, but he's not able to. And ultimately, Randy out. Randy Orton ends up passing out and Gunther chokes him out 
for the win. And it was a great match. Great match. The idea that Gunther couldn't really do what he normally does by packing people up with just his brute strength. He couldn't do that because he was injured with a with his arm through through the duration of the match. And Randy was really aggressive in this match. He had to use other means, which is choking him out. And he choked him out. And at the end of it, Gunther shakes out. He extends his hand to Randy. Randy shakes his hand. And they, you know, it looks like Randy says some positive, encouraging words to him. We don't know what he said. And he embraces, you know, not embrace, but he gives the nod and respect to Gunther. You rarely see that either. Granted, Gunther was, you know, was around his his countrymen. So, you know, he was getting a lot of love. But in this situation, seeing Gunther, he's a heel still, but he showed him respect. He showed him respect in this match, and it, that was a good, good, uh, dope moment. And the question becomes, what happens with Randy Orton? Do we start to see more of that heel side of Randy Orton come out? We'll see. I don't know where they go from here, but this was great. This was definitely fantastic. Good way to end off the show, and the right person won there. Um, Gunther definitely needed to be the one to win there. The question is, who do we have next to face Gunther? For that uh, World Heavyweight Championship. We will see. But it, it's just always a, a rare sight. To see Gunther being the one. To put his hand out. And he wants to shake his opponent's hand. And, and Randy ended up shaking his hand. And it looked like it was kind of a passing of the torch. Even though Gunther's had the torch for a while. But beating a legend like Randy Orton. In the way he did. Storytelling wise. It, it came off like a passing of the torch moment. So great, great match. Great way to end off the show. Great PLE. Uh... I gave this show an easy, this is an easy 8.5, 9 out of 10. Outside of the women's tag team match, which was the low point of the show, everything else was fantastic. It was quick and straight to the point. It didn't overstay its welcome. Love PLE events like this, especially in foreign crowds where they are electric. This crowd was electric. They brought the energy. Shout out to y'all in Berlin. Y'all did y'all damn thing. So now we're going back to the States. I think the next PLE is Bad Blood. It's going to be in Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah, I got to show out. It's Bad Blood. You got to bring the energy. Because Berlin, they did their thing. Enjoyed this pay-per-view. Definitely eight and a half, nine out of ten for me. But comment down below. Let me know. What did y'all rate this PLE? Bash in Berlin. Uh, what y'all rate on a scale of one to ten? Also, what was your favorite match of the show? What was your least favorite match of the show? And what are you guys looking forward to next going forward? Do we see uh, the heel turn of Kevin Owens? And when do we see that? If it does happen, what's going to happen with Randy Orton going forward? What, who's going to be Gunther's next opponent? We got some questions that need to be answered. So y'all let me know what y'all think. But I appreciate all the love and support y'all have shown on the channel. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.